great white whales, icons, unicorns. What makes a beer into a cult beer? The pandemic is taking its toll. Tonight, we're gonna to raise a toast to some of our lost favorites. He's Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Macnow. We're wishing you a Merry Christmas with this edition of What's Brewing. is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus craft beers. And by Conchahawking Brewing Company, now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at ConchiExpress.com. It's a place that inspires the dreamers, the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, Visit Bucks County and be inspired. Welcome to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mackner. We're at the Proper Brewing Company in Quakertown, PA. It's a chilly day outdoors, <laughs> but we're going to warm ourselves with some beer, Joe Sixpack. Yes, it is a bit breezy, but uh, we're doing the safe distancing thing, so this is one of our last shows of the year, too. It is, and we really, it's been a tough year for everybody. We wish everybody the best, and here's, here's hoping that 2021 is going to be better. It can't help but be. Well, and that's what you what, got in your hand there. Well, Glenn. that's what we're going to start with. Our beer swap today is cult beers. Uh, those those iconic beers, those white whales that are so hard to find and people wait in line for. Uh, and I brought you one that, in fact, my son waited in line 90 minutes in Massachusetts. This is Treehouse Julius. What a hero. Uh, yeah, I know. I really appreciate it. Uh, 6.8 ABV. This is their flagship IPA. I'm going to read you what it says. Bursting with fresh, hand-selected American hops, a bright, juicy beer. We're going to talk about that. Filled with flavors and aromas of mango, peach, passion fruit, and a melange of citrus fruit. What do you think? That is an outstanding beer. It's a lot of orange in the nose. And, you know, this is a well-known beer, especially in the East Coast. I know friends of mine have gone up and done that same thing standing in line. Look at this picture. This is their brewery because they don't sell out of the brewery. You have to go there to get it. Right. My son, now it's in cars. So you wait 90 minutes in your car to go and get it. Um, I love that stuff. The question is, is any beer waiting 90 minutes in line to get? I think it depends on the beer drinker. You know, some people are willing. This I've done good. it. Um, I'm not sure I would do it for this particular beer because honestly, there's a lot of good hazy IPAs, big juice bombs out there. I mean, I brought one uh, with me today from uh, the Sloop Brewing Company, I believe they're in New York, called Juice Bomb IPA. Oh, it's got yeah. a great rep. Let me take a look at that. Big and juicy. Thanks. <laughs> Boy, wait, wave a juice bomb in you front of You know that's Glenn going by me. Gone. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because this one is described as juicy. We know about hoppy, we know about hazy. The new adjective is juicy. What does that mean? Uh, it literally means that it tastes like juice uh, and not just sort of like that, that uh, bitter uh, tartness of a citric juice, but the sweetness of mm -hmm. it is there as well. The kind of, you know, imagine like opening up a grape orange and just like it's slobbering yeah, down love your it. chin. Love it. That's what we're talking about, that kind of juiciness. All right, so what do you bring so me here? So I wanted to, you know, my thoughts about 
cult beer is often that as good as they are, they are, you can often find other beers very similar to it. And the one I've written about over the years has been this Fegley's Hopsolutely, which to me is as close to a that Pliny the Younger triple IPA Ooh. you can get. <laughs> That it's packs a wallop. Strong, eleven percent alcohol. Yeah, that packs a wallop. Fegley's up there in uh, Bethlehem. Really a wonderful brewery. And you know, to me, like you asked at the beginning of this, is any beer worth standing in for, for line for? Sure, it is. But you you don't have to to get that great beer anymore. So beers become mm -hmm. iconic because of limited distribution. I know now they do because of the internet, because of the website. Somebody will write about three. Zombie dust, right? Which you scored some <laughs> actually brought out some. of Indiana, right. and then that will, you know, it'll enough good scores. People will have to get it. It's hard to get, right? Well, it has to be hard to get. That's the main thing. You have to sort of jump through hoops to get it at the beginning. Uh, there's going to be very little limited distribution. There's only going to be a very small supply, but uh, that that is going to help it start but beyond that it's got to have something else it's got to have a little bit of spark of excitement about it there's got to be good word on the internet uh, that this is a beer that is worth standing in line for do you remember when you and i when we used to do the podcast had the cult beer of the world yeah absolutely west lettering from uh, Belgium, it's uh, one of the Trappist monasteries there. Uh, that is literally, you cannot buy that beer unless you stand in line or actually get you in your car. You have to fly to Belgium, yeah. rent a car, drive to the brewery, the abbey, the monk, I mean the abbey, where the monks sell it one day a month. Right. And get the beer, and a guy was nice enough to bring us back a bottle, and it was pretty great. Yeah, that beer made an appearance in Philly, or in the region, uh, a number of years ago, and I stood in line for at five in the morning for that beer because it is it's such a it's a it's an excellent beer but again you could probably find something very similar to West Flatter and without standing in line you reminded me that back in the day and you and I go back to the day um, Coors was once an iconic yeah beer. exactly Paul Newman used to have it flown from Colorado to Connecticut right that was the whole point of Smokey and the Bandit you know we're gonna get this illegal shipment of uh, Coors to the East Coast or yeah. whatever so yeah uh, Again, it's a matter of supply and uh, and you know a good backstory on on cores would help it as well. But let me tell you something: if you're able to get this, Julius, it's great, great beer. I, I honestly agree. This is I haven't had it for a while. This is an excellent beer. Great. Thank you, son. Yeah, my, <laughs> my son. Thank you, Ted. You're a good boy. I appreciate it. Hey, coming up. Listen, it was a tough year. Some of our favorite places did not make it. Joe Sixpack and I will discuss some of our fallen heroes next from the Proper Brewing Company in Quakertown on What's Brewing. Hey, Zoom World, I'm Marissa Magnata. And I'm Chill Moody. Look, breweries need our support now more than ever. Many breweries offer delivery and takeout services. And beer makes a great gift. Go to visitphilly.com for more information. Hey everybody, it's cold outside and that means it's the winter beer season. Head to any Conshohocken Brewing Company location or local beer retailer for Conshohocken Brewing's seasonal lineup. We've got two hour delay, hazy winter IPA, Mr. Robusto, a robust porter, and two time World Beer Cup award winner, Puddler's Row ESB. Those and our others are sure to ring the bell this winter season. That's Conshohocken Brewing Company. Cheers. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. We're at the Proper Brewing Company in Quakertown, PA. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now. By the way, follow him on Twitter at beer underscore radar. Follow me on Twitter at real Glenn Mack now. The show at What's Brewing PA. Uh, and you're drinking something from our friends here at Proper. Yeah, this is uh, great. I've never had this. This is their Proper Cherry Stout. Uh, it's, it looks like a big, heavy beer. Beautiful it's only color, it's under six yeah. percent alcohol. The flavor is outstanding. Uh, we've gotten lucky and had a few stouts while we've been doing this Bucks County run, so not bad here. And I've got their hazy IPA that'll shock you, <laughs> known as Five, and it's really good. Okay, um, it's been a tough year, and businesses all over the country have been closing down, and bars, breweries are getting hit hard. A couple of our favorite places that we want to mention that did not make it through the pandemic. Yeah, two that really hit me hard, actually. One was uh, Bridgewater's, the pub at 30th Street Station. Uh, I had called it on several occasions the best beer bar in any train station in America. Uh, and, you, I, 
And you've been through many train and stations. I've been. <laughs> you've stumbled through many train stations. Slept there too. <laughs> but it was an outstanding place. It was just wonderful to go in there. They've specialized in both uh, unusual craft beer and also German style beers. Wonderful food. Just a great place to hang out while you're waiting for Amtrak or Scepter or whatever. And they had to close because of lack of business. Yeah, uh, nobody's going. Nobody's taking Amtrak. No, you know who's traveling? Right. And really, I know the owner Leslie, who's a terrific woman who really, really worked hard for that place. Very innovative. Uh, really was one of the advocates of great beer in Philadelphia. And uh, you know, I think it's a it's a big loss to Philadelphia to to have that go by the wayside. And I'm very saddened to see that. Agreed. So. And also a really great beer place up in the Northeast. Scotes, our friend Mike Scotese said. Uh, at the Grey Lodge was one of those people at his Grey Lodge pub. He completely renovated a neighborhood bar into something that was became a destination for craft beer lovers, particularly known for its Friday the Furkentinth events where he would line up the bar with a dozen or more casts of beer that you would just serve by gravity, you know, you know knock the bung out and yeah. let the beer pour out, wall to wall and uh, of people and that was just one of the events that he would run the guy was really an advocate for philadelphia beer yeah. also at least temporarily one of the iconic places in the city monks is shut down right monks now. is shut down uh, at least until the spring it appears uh, and there's been a bunch of others that have closed down at least temporarily temporarily including fergie's one of my favorite it's an irish pub in town uh, lucky 13 Time, Bar, Garage South, Garage Fishtown, uh, Second City, I'm sorry, Second District Brewing in, in South Philly. These are all places that are closing temporarily until we can get past this pandemic. It's really tough. It's been a, it's just been a horrible year and hopefully there will be good news in some of these places. We'll be able to reopen to their owners. We'll start new ventures because they are great. All right. Uh, meanwhile, at least one new brewery that you've got uh, news about. Actually, a few new breweries have showed up, uh, but the, the one locally is uh, that I uh, had heard about was F Wrong Crowd out in Westchester. I think they've been making beer for a little bit, but they found themselves a location that's opened up. Uh, two over in Jersey as well. Living Seed in Atlantic City. I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about that place. And Cherry Hill has the new mechanical brewing. Okay, very good. All right, one more thing. As we approach Christmas, and uh, by the way, happy holiday season to everybody. And jingle bells to your hat. There you go. There you go. Um, one of the great, most creative beer delivery things I've ever seen uh, came up with the Breckenridge Brewery out in Colorado that teamed with a local reindeer farm, held a big contest. Everybody entered. And 10 Colorado residents had the opportunity to have a keg of beer delivered to your house by a team of reindeer. <laughs> How about that? How cool would that be? There's a lot of p parts of that story, but th th not the least of which is reindeer farm. <laughs> yeah, what is I a don't reindeer know. Farm? I, I don't know. I don't know what they do with them the rest of the year. I, I've never had reindeer meat or milk or whatever. Maybe they're just for show. I don't know. But I thought this was such a great idea. And, and again, in a year where there's not much fun yeah. going on, it's great to have something like that. Wouldn't you love to win that? It's wonderful to see those kind of creative ideas for beer delivery. But I think reindeer, a team of reindeer on my front lawn with a case of beer might top that. Would be, that. that would be pretty good. <laughs> hey, coming up, our pal Ava Graham went to visit Red Lion Brewery right down the road from where we are. We're going to get her report and tell you more from the proper brewing company in Quakertown. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now. This is What's Brewing. It's a place that inspires the dreamers, the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, visit Bucks County and be inspired. Down is sponsored by the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, 
and 1,000 plus beers. Vote for your choices on Twitter at beer underscore radar, Real Glen Mac now, or What's Brewing PA. Welcome back to What's Brewing from the Proper Brewing Company. I'm Glenn Macnow, staying nice and warm under uh, this lamp. You look quite toasty over there, oh, yeah. Glenn. How about you there, buddy? <laughs> Not so much. Yeah, it's a little bit chilly. Uh, but you know what? Being outside drinking beer is good. I've done this in colder weather than this. I'm sure you have as yes, well. Yes. All right. Let's talk about our brew down this year. 32 of the most popular craft beers in the country. Yeah, we've had a little bit of pushback on some of these beers, but this was two rounds where we didn't hear that. Uh, in the global category, that is these breweries that are owned by larger uh, conglomerates, uh, New Belgium Fat Tire, yeah. a beer that uh, was, one of, was one of those iconic cult beers earlier. It beat Magic Hat number nine, 58% to 41 or 42%. So, okay. yeah. And then in the other one, this was probably one of our highest number of votes ever. We had almost 1,000 or 750 votes, I guess I should say. Uh, in this one, Allagash White, which is just a phenomenal Belgian style white beer, fell to Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Ooh, that's a tough matchup. It was a tough matchup. I gotta tell up. you, the selection committee really did a. <laughs> it's not fair to Allagash White. Uh, it, it was it was a tough one. I, I agree, uh, but uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale did 58% uh, against uh, Allagash White, so they'll okay. move into the next into the next All round. Right. And for people, because we do, and by the way, we post these on Twitter all the time. You, as we said, you can follow us, and we put them up there. Um, but people are sometimes saying, like, well, how is that one of the great beers? The credential, the criteria this year was not greatness. It was kind of popularity easy to find yeah right? ubiquitousness there you that's go. a word yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly what i would have used all right hey our friend ava graham is uh, helping us out this year she is traveling around a lot she went to the red lion brewery right down the road here in quakertown here's ava's report all right so we're just down the road a little bit at the historic red lion inn and it looks a little bit different in here right now because we're focusing in on a very special component of what is a historic building. They brew their own beer. Now, hello, Joe. We got the head brewer here hey, from Red you. Lion Brewery. And as you can see behind him, he's got all of his gear. This is his laboratory for the four beers that are featured right now at the Red Lion Inn. So, right, it's four beers that you have right now that you could get inside with a meal. What four beers are you featuring right now? So right now, um, we have our staple beer. It's called the Red Rebel Amber. It's basically an amber ale. It's a mix between an amber ale and an amber, amber lager. Um, and that's our staple, staple beer. We have that all year long. So we have a beer that was here this past summer that went over really well. It's called Q-Town Lockdown, Quaker Town Lockdown. Uh, it's basically a Pilsner that we brew. Um, and the twist on that is we brew it with a hop called Motueka that's from New Zealand. And the cool thing about this hop is it gives us a, it gives off like a lot of lime. Okay. Uh, we have that beer on tap. We have this beer that I have in my hand right now called Crocky. It is a 7.1% ABV New England IPA. I uh, brewed it with some of my favorite hops, Mosaic, Simcoe, and Amarillo. Um, we dry hop it twice, so it's very aromatic. To me, it almost smells like a like a fruity breakfast cereal because of all the oats in it. So. It's, uh, it's, it's, this is one of my personal favorites. Then we have a beer called Koma Sutra. It's our ongoing IPA series. It's always different. It's an always a different recipe. We use different hops, different malts, whatever we feel like doing, different yeast strains. Uh, usually we, we do a lot of blending with it. So that's uh, probably one of our favorite beers to have because it's always sound, changing. You sound so invested, Joe. It's, it's really quite a process and you sound very proud of it, which you should be. Yeah, super. This is, we're in a very small room right now. And it's you, solo operation, Joe. You're taking this on all the time. But did you say that you could be seeing more beer in the future here? You got it, yeah. So this is the little lab that we like to call it sometimes. Uh, we're moving into two different spots. Right now, immediately, there's a hardware store across the street from Nicole's. Uh, that'll be a small tap room. Then a couple years down the line is what we're super excited about. Down um, in the center of town in Quakertown, there's a church there that we're moving into. So there's going to be a big church, church brewery, I guess you could call it. Um, but that's where we'll be moving our operations into eventually, probably in the next three to five years. Now, how long have you been brewing beer here? Now, the Red Lion Inn has been around since the 1700s, but 
now, I mean, they were just drinking beer in there for all that time, and now you're brewing it and serving it to your customers here, which is absolutely brilliant. But how long have you been doing the brewing here? And uh, like, what, tell, give me the time frame. I've been brewing here with them probably for the past two and a half, three years now. Jan, the owner, and I have a friend, uh, and I used to post a lot of beer pictures that I uh, online of the beers that I would make. Okay. And uh, our mutual friend, his name's Lee, he saw it and said, hey, you should meet Jan. Jan has a brewery and the old brewer's leaving and she would love to have a brewer. So I got to meet Jan, she's pretty cool. And um, been brewing ever since. He seems it. Jan's gonna yeah. give us a little inside look at the Red Lion Inn, which is absolutely gorgeous and decorated for the Yule Tide Spirit. Thank you, Jan, for having us here today. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Now, this sign says 1748, but you said that you don't think it's... Well, the history books say 1747s, but it's it's old, so... Now, what brought us here today is beer, and there, you have established yourself as also a brewery. What made you bring your own beer, start the process here at the Red Line Inn? Well, the whole wave of, of uh, brewing started several years ago, and when I read that the Culinary Institute of America in uh, New York, uh, and also Connecticut, actually, it was the Connecticut campus, wanted to have Brooklyn Brewery build a facility there to teach that as a curriculum, I thought it was going to be some kind of special thing to do. So I decided that I wanted to add that as an extension of our restaurant and brew our own beer in-house. You know, now, of course, there's this huge wave of, you know, people traveling far and wide to all the different breweries everywhere across the United States, and it's quite the cult. And here at the Red Lion Inn, you don't just drink your beer, you actually incorporate it into your dining, into the food that you make. So there's some menu items that you have right now that have the beers that you're making right next door. Yes, our nachos have cheese that's made with it. We have wings that we also have marinated in the beer. So we're, we're incorporating all different sorts of, of culinary dishes with our different beers all the time. Well, very cool. Jan, thank you so much for having us here. Thanks for being here. And I can't wait to eat the French dip sandwich that I have to go on my way out. So I appreciate you having us. No problem. And if you are in Quaker Town, this is a must-stop location, not just because it's historic, but now that you can get a brew brewed here right in house. Glenn, Joe? That looked pretty darn great. Nice work by you, Ava. Hey, coming up, we're looking forward, we're going to talk to one of the owners here at the Proper Brewing Company in Quakertown. Find out all about their great business next on What's Brewing. They're not just familiar faces. They're your friends and neighbors. It's their small businesses, a beating heart that makes a neighborhood a home. The places with a pick-me-up or a story that inspires, where you can share a taste of comfort with the personal touch that makes our world shine a little brighter. Support small and make a big difference. Make it local. Make it Main Street. Make it Monco. The Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, over 90 breweries, and over a thousand beers. Sip your way through it, one beer at a time. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing Along with beer expert Joe Sixpack. I'm beer guzzler Glenn Mack now with the proper brewing company in Quaker Down with one of the owners. Brian Wilson, I loved you with the Beach Boys, oh, nice. and it's nice to see that you've gone on to bigger and better. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the Proper Brewing Company. Well, we've been here five years now. Um, we took an old theater and we restored it, tried to get it back to its original um, being, and um, yeah, it's been five years. It's, I mean, it really is. It's a great site. Thanks. Thanks. How, how old is the, is the building itself? 1922. 1922, so. and they were doing va vaudeville there. Vaudeville, at one point? yeah. When originally on the stage in there, they did vaudeville shows. That is so yeah. cool. Then it went to silent movies, and then it went to projection. Oh, projection yeah, movies. Projection. <laughs> yeah. All right, now so you got TVs in there. Yeah, right? Let's talk about what we're bringing. I got this beautiful looking stout here. What is this? Um, that's our proper cherry stout. Uh, it's basically a milk stout, light alcohol. Didn't want to get too crazy. Um, and I, really blend, nice. and I blend it in, it's, uh, it's, it's basically a, a basic milk stout, but I blend it with um, chocolate cherry coffee. 
Um, my wife actually, years ago, I was home brewing. She bought a pound of coffee, and she goes, "Can you make me a beer with this?" So that's how that came it, about. It tastes really. a lot stronger than it than it really is. I'm drinking what may be the the best named beer for 2020. Yeah. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, hazy IPA. Yes. How'd you come yeah. up with that name? Um, well, running a business, um, <laughs> <laughs> say no more on yeah. a daily basis. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got That's it. You, so yeah. people, oh, we, when, when we do these features, a lot of our audience says, boy, that's exactly what I want to do. How do you get into that? So you and your wife, Chris, how did you get into this? Um, well, I started, I was traveling for work and I started going out to the West coast a lot. So I started drinking Sierra Nevada's of the world. Um, then I started really getting into craft and she took me to a beer festival. I just fell in love. Then one Father's Day, I bought. Uh, she bought me a uh, homebrew kit, you know the little yeah. yeah, and it started from there. So yeah. we've got this beauty sitting in front of us. What is what is this, and and why aren't you opening it yet? Oh, the King Willie. Yeah, yes. that's our bourbon barrel stout. So every year I do a bourbon barrel stout. This is from 2018. 19 is just finishing up now. Um, it's basically a, a 10% stout aged in uh, wild turkey barrels. This is definitely my my favorite beer I make. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it's. Tell us a little bit about uh, aging beers in barrels. How does that, you know, how does it impart the flavors? How is it improving the beer or changing the beer? Uh, it just changes the flavors, basically. It changes, um, it, I mean, you'll, you'll taste it. It's a uh, straight bourbon, a little Whoa. flavor on the yeah, You can smell it on the nose. Yeah, and, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the longer you leave it, the more bourbon character you're, you're going to get. Um, that one, it was probably about nine months in a barrel. So. Wow, that's uh, how much got a nice get to it. <laughs> yeah, and it's not it's not overwhelming. Wow, that's it's really it's nice. kind of like a smooth. Yeah, it's been aging too, so it's How long? Uh, um since 2018 basically. Yeah, wow. So. Now, one of the other cool things that you did uh, was open up a tasting room in mm -hmm. a axe throwing yeah, location. Yeah. Uh, I understand it's closed down before the pandemic, but you're going right. to come back into that yeah, space. Yeah, plans are to come back right now or shut it down cuz you know, the crowds and the sizes and everything, plus with the food requirement. So, we're just on hiatus right now. So, um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, once everything so picks axe up, throwing and beer sounds. I don't know, Glenn. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's a great mix. All right, I want to wrap it up with this. So, you sell uh, in crowlers. People come and buy the crowlers, and we talked about some of the varieties. How many things you got going typically at one time? Um, I use, my my goal is to have twelve on tap at all times. So. There you well, go. Give or take. And you really do run the yeah. gamut from that to this is a Blondale to the Stouts to everything else. That was the key, to try to make something everybody can enjoy, especially in our restaurant environment. Well, we've enjoyed our day here. We want to thank you and Chris for having us here. We want to thank everybody for watching the show. It is our pleasure to be with you. We wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Until we see you next, for Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack, now our best from What's Boom. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus craft beers. And by Conchahawking Brewing Company, now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at ConchiExpress.com.